Gaddafi nationalized key sectors of the oil resources and negotiated fair prices within OPEC for oil producing countries. He used the oil revenues to build schools, universities, hospitals, and much needed infrastructure. Before Gaddafi, fewer than one fifth of Libyans were literate, no access to education for the majority of people, and then after Gaddafi, free quality education system, including university, and the literacy rate rose to 83%. Libya has free health care. All people, including the rebels, have access to doctors, hospitals, clinics, and medicines free of charge. If a Libyan needs surgery that is unavailable in Libya, funding is provided for the surgery to be carried out overseas. Soon after the revolution, basic food items were subsidized and electricity was made available throughout the country. Huge irrigation projects were established in order to support a drive towards agriculture development and self-sufficiency in food production. Gaddafi initiated the construction of the Great Man-Made River, referred to in the Guinness Book of Records as a wonder of the modern world. This gigantic river has managed to turn the coastal desert green. In its early days, skeptics called it the Great Madman's River, a reference to the Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi and its enormous expense, billions of dollars. Any Libyan who wanted to become a farmer was, and still is given, free use of land, a house, farm equipment, livestock, and seeds. Gaddafi vowed to house every Libyan, many of whom were still living in tents and houses made out of oil drums. He also vowed that his own parents, who lived in a tent, would not be housed until every Libyan was housed. His mother had only one complaint. Her son insists that they remain in their tent until every Libyan is properly housed. He fulfilled that promise, his own father dying before he had the opportunity to move him into a home. Large-scale housing construction took place right across the country, all Libyans being given a house or apartment to live in for free. Under the leadership of Gaddafi, Libya has attained the highest standard of living in Africa, rated on the UN's HDI ahead of Russia, Brazil, and Saudi Arabia. In 2007, in an article which appeared in the African Executive magazine, it was noted that Libya, unlike other oil-producing countries such as Nigeria, utilized the revenue from its oil to develop its country. Gaddafi believes that economic democracy can only be achieved when the GDP of a country benefits all of its citizens and when the country's wealth is dispersed to every single citizen. Today, money from Libya's oil revenue is directly deposited into the bank account of every Libyan. Gaddafi is dedicated to the emancipation of Libyan women, encouraging them to participate in all aspects of political life. The revolution ensured that women gained full access to education and has actively encouraged acceptance of female paid employment. Libya is a very traditional society, and these moves by Gaddafi have been met with stiff resistance, especially by the forces in Benghazi. He opposed the U.S. invasion of Iraq and condemned those Arab leaders who supported the so-called Coalition of the Willing, earning the wrath of the Saudi monarchy when he said that the Kaaba was under the yoke of American occupation and questioned what meaning the Hajj has for Muslims as long as the American occupation of the sacred house of God continues. In October of 2010, Gaddafi was the first and only leader in the Arab world to formally apologize for the Arab role in the trade and capture of Africans. This infuriated Arab leaders. Disgruntled with the arrogance of the Arab leaders and the continual thorn in their side as he openly criticized their hypocrisy and servitude to Western imperialism, Gaddafi became isolated in the Arab world. He called on the African Union to give representation to Africans in the U.S., Europe, the Caribbean, and South America. In a recent speech, he said, from now on, by the will of God, I will assign teams to search 
investigate and liaise with the Africans in Europe and to check their situation. This is my duty and role towards the sons of Africa. I am a soldier for Africa. I am here for you and I work for you. Therefore, I will not leave you and I will follow up on your conditions. One of Gaddafi's most controversial and difficult moves has been his determined drive to unite Africa with a shared vision for the true independence and liberation of the entire continent. He has contributed a great deal of his time, energy, and large sums of money to this project. When war broke out in Uganda, the Congo, Ethiopia, and Eritrea, Gaddafi negotiated ceasefires, part of his long-held dream of creating a unified continent called the United States of Africa. While the Libyan revolution has irritated the West since its inception, and although they never forgave Gaddafi for nationalizing Libya's oil, the most worrying move has been his call for the unification of Africa. After years of tireless effort on the part of Gaddafi and the Libyan revolutionary movements, the idea of the United States of Africa is gaining real momentum and support on the continent. In 1982, the world Mathaba was established in Libya. Mathaba means a gathering place for people with a common purpose. The world Mathaba brought together revolutionaries and freedom fighters from every corner of the globe to share ideas and develop their revolutionary knowledge. Many liberation groups received education, training, and support from Libya. These are just some of the groups that Gaddafi has helped. And because of his support, Gaddafi has been labeled a terrorist. Nelson Mandela called Gaddafi one of the 20th century's greatest freedom fighters and insisted the eventual collapse of the apartheid system owed much to Gaddafi and Libyan support. Mandela said that, in the darkest moments of our struggle, when our backs were to the wall, Muammar Gaddafi stood with us.